Here's what I'm asking the legislature. Give me the tools and hold me accountable for the results. Our jobs budget makes sure government is held accountable for every spending decision. And by focusing on the core missions of government and only the core missions of government, this budget will give Florida a competitive edge in attracting jobs. I know the members of this body have thoughtful, constructive modifications to our jobs budget. But we must not lose our focus or blunt our momentum. Business people in Florida and around the world are watching what we do in the, in the weeks ahead. They can locate anywhere. They will be deciding whether to invest in Florida based in part on our ability to work together to remove the obstacles to business success. I'm convinced that putting this plan into action will put our state on the road to prosperity. On behalf of the millions of Floridians who are desperate for new jobs, I ask you to pass our jobs budget promptly. We also need to focus on our incredible opportunity to improve our K-12 education system. We now have real innovators offering a 21st century approach to education. And many of those new approaches offer better outcomes without increasing cost. With so many Floridians out of work and the exhaustion of one-time federal handouts, Florida educators will face challenges in managing limited resources. But our commitment to positive change must not waver. Let's begin by agreeing on a few basic principles. First, that individual student learning must be the touchstone for all decisions. <laughs> Practices that improve student learning must be adopted. Practices that impair student learning must be abolished. Second, I think we can all agree that the single most important factor in student learning is the quality of teaching. Florida has to recruit, train, support, and promote great teachers, great school principals, and great school superintendents. <laughs> great educators are priceless. Every one of us has a teacher in our past who made a lifelong difference in our lives. Educators, like other professionals, should be rewarded based on the effectiveness of their work, not the length of their professional life. That's why Florida needs to pay the best educators more and end the practice of guaranteeing educators a job for life, regardless of their performance. The third principle worth remembering is that we all improve through competition. Think of how exciting it will be when our schools are recruiting our children, when every school in the state focuses on continual improvement in order to outperform every other school in attracting students. We also need to expand the eligibility for opportunity scholarships to harness the power of engaged parents. And I'm calling for an increase in the number of charter schools public schools that are allowed to work independently of school boards and can innovate in ways that encourage all schools to improve. With us today is the principal of a very successful charter school, Sonia Mitchell of Florida International Academy. This charter school moved from an F school to an A school. And Ms. Mitch Ms. Mitchell attributes their success to the passion of great educators and the weekly measurements of student outcomes. Thank you very much. And we can also all agree that measuring result is a key aspect of education. We must test our students, and we must evaluate our educators. Those measurements have to be fair and thoughtful, and they need to have rewards and consequences, not just rewards. 
We must also analyze how much education money is spent in the classroom versus how much money is spent on administration or capital outlays. With these principles in mind, Florida can, can become the most innovative and effective place in the country to educate the workforce of the future. In other areas where government has a role to play, we're offering cost-conscious reform. Most, Flor most Floridians have had to tighten their belts. The state needs to do the exact same thing. We are streamlining the function of state agencies to save money and provide better service to taxpayers. We're reviewing every activity in every agency with a fresh eye, and we are trying to simplify the structure of state government. For example, I've asked the Division of Emergency Management to report directly to me. If a hurricane comes our way, I hope it doesn't, I will be personally and continu continually engaged in solving problems. There will be direct, clear lines of authority that will expedite our results, our efforts. We're also going to modernize our state government. Florida is currently the only state where taxpayers pay for the entire portion, for uh, the entire pension for state workers. We need to secure the state's pension system and be fair to the taxpayers of Florida. We're going to bring Florida's retirement system in line with other states by having government workers contribute towards their own retirement, just like everyone else. <laughs> Providing a modern uh, health care safety net for our low-income and disabled citizens is an important state function, but the cost of this program, as we all know, have been spiraling out of control. Yet there are ways to save money and provide better care by adopting market principles and giving patients more choices. Unfortunately, the federal government requires Florida to get approval before expanding, or expanding the use of these innovative cost-saving programs. The federal government seems to forget that federal revenues were once the hard-earned dollar of Floridians. But with or without the cooperation of the federal government, we will find a way to meet the health care needs without jeopardizing other priorities. Another government program with good intentions and potentially disastrous side effects is our system of unemployment compensation. In times of high employment, the system provides a critical safety net. But its rising costs, which are borne by the very employers who are struggling to stay in business, threaten to create even more job losses. The cost of unemployment insurance cannot be allowed to deter job creation. By working with this legislature, we will bring down those costs. And finally, we need lawsuit reform. As we know, every Floridian has to have access to the courts for redress of harms. But at the same time, we can't allow frivolous lawsuits and unreasonable awards to give our state a reputation that frightens away new jobs. I ask everyone to look beyond the short term and imagine with me what Florida will look like when we turn our state around. Florida will be the leading job creator over the next eight years. No income tax, a phase out of the business tax, the expansion of the Panama Canal, the expansion of the economies in Central and South America, our great weather, our beaches, the Everglades, world-class theme parks, Florida Oranges, our universities and colleges, the hardest working people in the world, we will become the most exciting place in the world to live, work, and play. With more than 407,000 new jobs, families will be, be able to build their own version of the American dream with the security of steady employment opportunities. Entrepreneurs will be able to create a business climate that continually offers us new, new jobs and services. State government will be smart, lean, affordable, and focused only on its core missions.
Let me close with this. It's a rare blessing on life to be in a position to improve the lives of millions of people. The leaders in this room have the power to make that happen. You can make that kind of difference. We have a unique opportunity to put government back in its proper place and show the nation how private sector growth leads to prosperity. Such a moment may not come again. My jobs budget has plenty of critics. Some critics are accustomed to big government and will fight to protect special interests. And there are others who agree on our policy but say that the agenda is way too bold, that we need to trim our sales and settle for small improve improvements. They're wrong. I didn't fight to become the 45th governor of the greatest state in the nation to settle for the status quo that does not promote the enormous potential of our people. <clears throat> I am completely committed to this mission, and it is achievable. A vast majority of legislators were elected, as was I, on our promise of smaller government, lower taxes, less regulation, support for job creation, individual opportunity, individual accountability, and more freedom. Don't blink. Don't let special interests persuade you to turn your backs on the people who elected you. Keep faith with the Floridians who supported you because you said, I believe in the American dream. Remember their faces when you decide how you're going to vote in the weeks ahead. Working together, we can do incredible things if we stand together with the courage of our convictions and do what we said we were going to do. Ronald Reagan once said about America, it's a place unimpressed with what others say is impossible. That's especially true about Florida. We are a state that has regularly done the impossible. We build magic kingdoms. We launch ships that fly to the moon. Focus, Florida can be the state where the American dream continues to be a reality. The world is watching us and God is watching over us. Our success will be the model for the nation with new jobs and an education system full of new energy will plot the course for a brighter future. May, may God bless our great state and may God bless each of you. Let's get to work.